as we explore some culinary creations and edible experiments. That's right, it's a bake-off. We're talking about some tasty challenges as we find out what it means to have patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. I know it can be super hard to wait for something that you want right now. And that's why you've got to sprinkle in a little bit of patience. Especially when you bake. Raise your hand if you've ever baked something. Great! I bet a lot of you have helped your mom, your dad, grandma, or another adult in the kitchen. Now let me ask you this. Do you just dump a whole bunch of ingredients in a bowl at random? Like a little bit of this and a little bit of that? Or do you measure everything out very carefully? It's important to get the measurements just right when you bake. And that takes some patience. I don't know how many times I've dumped too much salt or vanilla in a cake and it comes out, well, not perfect. For today's Bake Off Challenge, we'll tackle the sometimes tricky task of measuring. It's a little game I like to call Ready, Set, Measure. Ready, Set, Measure. That's what we're going to play right now. We're, we got marbles, sugar cubes, and some water. I'm not going to eat another one. He ate one right before this. And we have water. So we are going to try to get a cup of water first. All right, Isaac. I just pour how water. much you think is in there. Okay. In the Only a cup. One cup. One cup. Here he goes. Ooh. I need a little more. That's uh, right, that, that's that it. might be close. That might be close. Uh, my turn. Uh, I'm gonna do the. Ooh, you yeah, might as well. I went the whole thing. Cause it might be half. All right, now we're on to a third cup of sugar cubes. Let's go. All right. All right. Go first. Go, no, you go, to get, go together. All right. Time's up. Let's see. I'll go first. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit short. Let's see. What you got? Huh? I'm, so, I'm short. I'm a little He's short. He's a little too. short too. This is tough. All right, Isaac's gonna measure. Let's see. Oh man, this is tough. I'm oh, way short. Way short. Way short. Let's see. What do I get? What do I get? All right, you gotta put your hands around. I look short too now. Uh, I think I'm closer yeah, by probably closer. one marble. Hey, good game, yeah, bro. Good game. Good game. All right, hey, we're gonna jump into the Bible story. Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Today we have a great story from the Bible. It's about a guy named Simeon. There are lots of people in the Bible who are known for lots of different things, like David, who's known for defeating a giant and being a great king, or Esther, who's being famous for being brave and saving her people. But Simeon is known for something else. He's known for waiting. Kind of weird, right? What was Simeon even waiting for? Let's find out. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord, help me understand your law. 
Help me serve you with my whole life. Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him. And one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade? We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. A temple courtyard? I I'm on my way. Uh, where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's Spirit led Simeon straight up to the Temple Mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard, allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage, the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly. May I hold the child? <laughs> well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord. You are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. Simeon must have trusted God a lot because he had to wait a really long time to see God's promise come true. And sure enough, God came through in the end. It just goes to show that God always, always keeps his promises. No matter what you have to wait for, God is always with you. You can trust him while you're waiting just like Simeon did. In fact, you can trust God no matter what. You can trust God when you have to wait for something little, like when your grandma tells you not to snack so you won't spoil your dinner. I did that. <laughs> and you can trust God when you're waiting for something big, like your new baby sister being born, or for your mom and dad to find a new job. God will always be with you, even when you're waiting. That's something we should never forget. Bottom line is, when you have to wait, remember, God is with you. That makes me think, I wonder what it must have been like for Simeon to wait so long. I mean, the Spirit had promised that he would get to see the Savior, but Simeon had no idea when that would happen. It might have taken years, and years, and years. Simeon had to wait patiently and trust that God was always with him. And in the end, he did get to meet Jesus, the Savior of the world. There are times when we have to wait too. We need to remember that God is with us and trust that He is in control. Our bottom line today is, when you have to wait, remember God is with you. When you have to wait for something right now, you really don't have to wait too long. Just talk to God about it 
Tell him how you feel and ask him to help you live with patience. If you think about it, this past year has been so difficult for a lot of us. We've had to change the way we live because of this pandemic. We've wanted things to go back to normal. And there were times when it seemed like that might never happen. But God has been with us through it all. He's with us right now. He's always there to help us and give us strength when we have to wait. That is so true. He is also with you when you have to wait for something you don't want to do. Like maybe you have a big test coming up or a dentist appointment. Waiting for those things can make you nervous or anxious. But remember, the bottom line is, when you have to wait, remember that God is with you. Say it with me, you guys. The bottom line is, when you have to wait, remember that God is with you. Our memory verse this month reminds us what we can do when we have to wait. It's something David wrote in Psalm 27:14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. Remember that God is always there to help you, even when you have to wait. So while you're waiting for Steamboat Kids next week, practice patience with your family, friends, and even yourself. We'll see you next week, Steamboat Kids!